Hi there, Nicholas Cameron here from First Formations, here today to talk to you about transferring and issuing company shares. Now this video is part of our ongoing Whiteboard Thursday series, the series where we take a look at all of the aspects of running a limited company here in the UK. So if you want to keep up to date and find out all there is to know about forming and administering companies, then hit that subscribe button. But for now, let's get started. So limited companies can issue more shares at any point after incorporation. Likewise, shareholders, who are also known as company members, can transfer or sell shares to other people at any time. In the cases of both transferring and issuing shares, the correct procedures must be followed in accordance with the provisions as set out by the Companies Act 2006, the company's own Articles of Association, and of course any shareholder agreements if there are ones in place. To start with, let's take a look at how you go about transferring company shares. Now, limited company shares can be transferred from one person to another in exchange for either a cash payment or perhaps a non-cash consideration. This will include things like goods, services, knowledge, or the writing off of debt. They can also be transferred as part of an employee share scheme, or they can tra be transferred to a family member or spouse as a gift. If you wish to transfer shares after your company is formed, you'll need to start by completing a stock transfer form. The form will include information such as your company name and its registration number, the quantity and class of the shares being transferred, the name and address of the existing shareholder, which is known as the transferor, and the name and address of the new shareholder, which is also known as the transferee. You'll also need to include the amount paid for the shares, as well as details of any non-cash payments that were included as part of the transaction. The signature of the transferor and transferee in some cases is then required. And of course, if there's a stamp duty liability, this should also be included. A completed stock transfer form must be delivered to HMRC if the sale value of the transfer exceeds £1,000. If it does, the transferee will be liable to pay stamp duty tax of 0.5% on that total sale value. The transfer must then be approved by the board of directors, either at a meeting or by way of board resolution. For some companies, the existing shareholders may also need to pass a special resolution to waive their right to preemption on the transfer of shares themselves. When the transfer is complete, the directors must provide a copy of the stock transfer form to both the transferor and the transferee. They should also retain their own copy uh, for their own statutory records, which should be stored at either the registered office or a sale address if they have one. The new shareholder must be issued with a share certificate as proof of ownership. The statutory registered members should be updated to reflect the share transfer and to record details of the new and the old shareholders. If necessary, the Register of People's Significant Control should also be updated. There is no need to immediately notify Companies House when share transfers actually take place, as this can simply be reported on the next annual confirmation statement when it comes around. Next, let's take a look at the process of issuing company shares following incorporation. Companies may be required to issue new shares for a number of reasons, but the sorts of reasons this might include may be to bring in a new business partner or to raise additional capital through outside investors, maybe for, uh, to fund expansion or to pay for a new project, also to pay off business debts or to issue as part of a bonus scheme for employees or simply to provide a gift to family members. The Companies Act doesn't impose legal restrictions on the number of shares that a private company can issue during or after incorporation, but it is possible to include certain restrictions within the articles and shareholder agreements. Those restrictions might include things like authorised share capital, preemption rights uh, for existing members, and the director's powers to authorise allotments. So to issue company shares, the prospective member or members must make an application to the company. Existing members will usually then need to waive their, their right to preemption and to follow any other provisions as described within the articles. Finally, the allotment should then be accepted by the directors or sometimes by the shareholders, dependent on what is actually provided for within the articles. 
Once the allotment has taken place, the director should submit the SH01 form to company's house. And this form will inc include things like the company name and the registration number, the date the allotment took place, the name, class, currency, and nominal value of each of the shares, the amount paid or unpaid for those shares in question, details of any non-cash payments where applicable, a statement of capital, the prescribed particulars, that's the rights attached to those shares, and finally, of course, uh, the signature of the director. Now listen up, because this is important. Directors are legally responsible for filing the form SHO1 at company's house no, no later than one month after the allotment has been completed. The director should also provide a share certificate uh, to each of the new shareholders to retain copies of share certificates at the company's registered office or sale address, to update the statutory register of members, and also to update the people within the control register if that has also been impacted by the changes, and to report the changes to company's house uh, in terms of the shareholdings themselves using the confirmation statement when it's next due. So that's how the transfer and issue shares. Next, let's talk about the authorised share capital. Now, authorised share capital is an optional provision that can be included in the Articles of Association. It essentially limits the number and value of issued shares that the company may have at any given moment. Companies formed before the 1st of October 2009 under the old Companies Act have this provision automatically included within their memorandum and articles. Companies incorporated under the 2006 Act, i.e. after the 1st of October 2009, are free to forego this provision entirely. However, they can still include it within their articles if they so wish. So you might be asking yourself, why was the authorised share capital removed as a legal requirement? Now, simply put, Authorised share capital became optional when stamp duty ceased to be payable on authorised capital. When companies were incorporated under the old Act, they were required to pay stamp duty actually on the authorised capital itself. And then this authorised capital was stated within the Memorandum and Articles of Association as a sum of money divided into a quantity of shares at a fixed value. Companies weren't required to issue all of their authorised shares, but they weren't allowed to issue more than the maximum figure as detailed within the, that memorandum and articles. Nowadays, stamp duty on shares is now only payable to HMRC when the sale of a transfer exceeds £1,000. Next, we'll need to address the preemption rights of existing company shareholders. Preemption rights are provisions that provide existing members with the first refusal to any new or existing company shares that become available. The Companies Act provides default preemption rights on the allotment of shares, which can be removed from the articles or waived for individual transactions by passing a special resolution. While there are no automatic statutory provisions for preemption rights on the transfer of shares, again, companies can include that optionally within their articles. Preemption rights also protect members from unfair dilation and it enables them to uh, maintain their proportion and control over a company. Let's take a quick look at an example of this in action. Say you have a company and you own 25% of the issued shares. That means if the company seeks to issue more shares um, in the future, you must be given the option to purchase 25% of the shares that do become available. You can, of course, decline to purchase the shares, uh, at which point they'll be offered to outside prospective members. Preemption rights can also help prevent non-members from joining a company and potentially harming the status quo or overall mission of the business. Finally, let's look at the power of directors to transfer and allot shares. So the rights and powers of directors, including the power of transfer and allotment of shares, are outlined in the Companies Act, the Articles of Association, and any service agreement between the company and the directors themselves. That being said, members do have the power to alter these rights at any time by passing a resolution. First, there's the power of the directors to transfer company shares. Now, share transfers can usually be authorised by the directors themselves, as we saw earlier. But due to the impact that the transfers can have on the members' beneficial rights and controlling interests, directors uh, are sometimes prohibited from authorising transfers without the permission of the existing members. 
When the director doesn't have this power to authorize the transfer of shares, that means that the company members will need to pass a resolution to either grant that authorization to the directors or submit, permit the transfer on that particular occasion. Then we've got the power of the directors to issue company shares. The article was adopted by private limited companies formed after the 1st of October 2009. We usually permit directors of companies with a single share class to authorize the allotment of an unlimited amount of ordinary shares without seeking the approval of the existing members. But it is important to note that this power is still at the discretion of the members. That's because they have the right to restrict directors' powers at any time if they so wish. Finally, if the directors aren't permitted to authorize an allotment, the shareholders must pass a resolution to approve it, or simply to amend the articles to grant such powers to the directors. And that's it. So in today's video, we've looked at how one goes about transferring and issuing company shares. We've also looked at the authorized share capital and the power of directors to authorize transfers and allotments. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment. And don't forget, if you want to be the first to receive notifications whenever we release a video just like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Cheerio.